yeah, baby. Number 21, daddy. Number 21 right here, man. What's going on, man? Rock and roll, James. I got Mr. Quincy Carter, man, former Dallas Cowboys here with me like we do every Wednesday, man. We talk about the games, man, and welcome back. Quincy, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Doing good, buddy. How you doing? Doing good, man. Good. Doing good, man. The Cowboys won, so I'm happy, bro. Hey, big victory. Big victory on Sunday, man. And I got to hand it to you because last week, you know, we, we saw how bad they did, and, uh, and I asked you about this game, and you said that, the Cowboys are known to respond, bro. And that's all I thought about after that game is what you said. Well, not only that, but, you know, I got to throw my boy in, Dak. <laughs> yeah. He's resilient, man. Yeah. And, um, and, that, and that resiliency actually pours into the rest of the team, you know. But now we got to start stringing victories together and yeah. uh, not this seesaw well, kind of season we're having right now. Yeah, and if they they con- they continue to play the way they did that night where everybody was getting a piece of that ball, man. Everybody touched the ball, whether it's Cooper, Hearns, uh, even Smith coming Gallup. in. Gallup. Uh, yeah, Gallup. Uh, even Smith coming in off the bench for uh, Ezekiel. Of course, Ezekiel touched it and did well when he touched it. But uh, but that's going to be the key, getting everybody involved, even Coles Beasley. You know, getting him involved early in the mm-hmm. game, too, in the first half, you know, was a key. They're becoming some major weapons, man. When he was uh, able to throw the ball at Cooper, um, Gallup, Hearns, and then when you give the ball to – you know, number 21, Ezekiel Elliott, he tends to run harder knowing that, hey, he's got those guys he can depend on as well. Like we said a couple of weeks ago, we knew uh, the offense was going to be a little bit behind the eight ball simply because you're adding a guy like Cooper. The offense got to start coming together and gelling a little bit, and that takes time. And then, you know, when you get banged up offensive linemen and, you know, offensive linemen going in and out of the, you know, the lineup, um, each and every week, hey, you know, that hurts the team too. And then having a new offensive line coach too. So, you know, it's gelling. Um, I'm optimistic about the future uh, as far as the rest of the season. But, you know, at the same time, you know, uh, I think we still got to be patient though, James, because um, it is a work in progress right now. Well, coming up this uh, coming weekend, they're going to be playing the Falcons, man. Falcons lost uh, this past uh, weekend and um, – I don't know. They could be beatable. I would think they, they, they're they beatable, man. I think Dallas can probably take them, and they look good on the road, man, in a cold Philadelphia football field, man. Yeah, I, you know something? I like the, I like the boys this weekend, uh, but, hey, uh, they're going to get a good shot, you know, from the Falcons. Uh, actually, they're coming off a tough loss, you know, to the Browns this past weekend. So but I think if we consistently run this football and uh, and consistently um, get everybody involved too. We shouldn't have problems though. But hey, trust me, you know me being a Decatur boy and um, knowing how our Falcons fans Atlanta, are back yeah. home, we're gonna get our best shot this week. <laughs> you know, me. now that you now that you say you're from Decatur, Georgia, man. Growing up, were you an Atlanta Falcon fan or were you a Dallas Cowboy fan? Man? Oh, they're gonna kill me for this. But actually, <laughs> most of my most of my most of my good friends already know. That uh, I actually grew up a Chicago Bears fan. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, that, that's where you Chicago. were born in. Exactly. So most of my friends already uh, know that. Because you know. it's interesting, man. You know, when you go to, uh, you know, you see Dallas Cowboy games on the road, sometimes when they make a big play, the stadium is louder than, you know, than the home team, man. And, you know, it's interesting how, you know, Dallas Cowboy fans don't only travel, but they have fan bases just about in every NFL city, right, bro? And I was, that's what I was just getting ready to say, too. They're not even traveling. Those Cowboys fans are already there in that city. Yeah, and that's how big of a fan base there is for the Cowboys. Well, there's yep. a, that's a reason they're like the most expensive, valuable uh, sports franchise in the entire universe, man. Mm. Yep, uh-huh. The Cowboys are number one. Yeah, yep. man. They're worth billions, daddy. Yes, sir. <laughs> because they're America's team, man. Remember that. <laughs> Last week, we had uh, Quincy's picks. And you're a four out of five, man. Wow. You didn't do too bad. Not too shabby. The Bears beat the Lions. The Cowboys beat the Eagles. The Saints beat the Bengals. The Rams beat the Seahawks. And the Steelers beat the Panthers. That's the only one you lost, man. What happened to the Panthers, man? You know something? It went all downhill from that uh, pick six that Cam Newton threw. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and wow, they uh, they took advantage of that turnover and uh, took advantage of that home crowd, man, and uh, really took it to them, though. They really did. All right. Well, we've got another uh, group of uh, 
games that we're going to have Quincy pick. So far, his record is 4-1. and one, And uh, the Cowboys-Falcons, man, who's going to take that one? You know something? I like my boys in this one. Um, you know, like I said, you know, the Falcons going to give them their best punch. Um, but, hey, I like the, you know, the way the offense is going right now and the defense is playing, you know, um, uh, playing lights out too at the same time. So uh, I like the boys. You picked the Bears this past week, and you were right on there, man. They won, so they're playing the Vikings, man. Is it going to be a tougher game for the Bears? It is going to be a tougher game, um, but uh, I like my Bears. Uh, you know, I'm a Bears fan too, and uh, I like for offense. You know, be honest with you, I like for that offense to start running the ball a little bit more, like the boys are running the ball too. But hey, Trubisky is doing a great job of throwing the football, though. But I like the Bears. Kansas City and Rams, that ought to be a good game, man. Uh, sort of like the Seattle Rams game. It looks like every game the Rams are in, man, it's a solid game, man. That's something that's going to be entertaining. There's a high scoring. So what do you think? Is it going to be a high scoring game? Is it going to be a you score, I score, and a lead changings and all that? James, is this is not a high scoring game right here? <laughs> it's some point shaving going on. Yeah. I hate it's not going to be in Mexico, though. I really wanted to see that crowd in Mexico. They just moved the game to L.A. today, though. But I hate it's not going to be in Mexico, though. But it's going to be a shootout. And actually, to be honest, which is going to be the last person, I mean, the last team with the football. And since it's, LA, since it's in, in, in L.A., you know, I think I'm going to take the Rams on this one. All right. Uh -huh. The Rams beat in Kansas City. Yep. Yeah, because I don't know about the Rams being in the cold weather in Kansas City, man. Exactly. <laughs> Seahawks and Packers, man. How about the Seahawks and Packers? You know something? Uh, both teams, for both of these teams, it's a must win if mm -hmm. they even have any aspirations of going to the playoffs. Um, but I like Aaron Rodgers in this one. You know, uh, I know the Seahawks played a tough one last week against the Rams. Actually ran the ball real well. But the Packers, I think, has the better defense. And uh, they got number 12, Aaron Rodgers, too. So I like the Packers. Packers on that one. Okay, this is a good one because, you know, this weekend, uh, the NFC East teams that are uh, competitive to the Dallas Cowboys have the opportunity to lose. <laughs> and we're hoping they lose, right? So the Texans are playing the Redskins in Washington, D.C., man. Can the Texans help the Cowboys out, man? They definitely can help them out. And the Redskins look like they're going the opposite way right now. Um, they've got a lot of players hurt right now. And, uh, and I'm not sure – if um, if they're going to be able to stop a hot team like the Texans right now, what Deshaun Watson is doing on offense. So I like the Texans. All right, the Texans. Those are Quincy's picks. Is the Cowboys, Falcons, Cowboys winning, Bears, Vikings, Bears winning, Kansas City, Rams, Rams winning, uh, Packers versus Seahawks. Packers are going to win that one. And Lord hear him that the Texans will beat the Redskins. <laughs> 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 hey, by the way, if you have a son or a daughter that's in, uh, in, in sports or athletics and they need a little guidance, uh, this guy right here, he's been through college sports, he's been through the NFL, and he's ready to show all the secrets, man, that he's got and he's learned uh, through his, throughout his career. Uh, Quincy, what number can they call in case they want you to, you know, give them a little bit of advice or give them a little training, man? Hey, uh, give me a shout at 470-332-2659. That's quarterback training, uh, speed and agility training, baseball lessons, hitting lessons, pitching lessons, outfield lessons. And also, you can also contact me on Messenger on Quincy LaVon Carter. You can call me at 470-332-2659. Give me a shout. A lot of you don't realize that this guy is a really a pitcher at, at heart, man. He's a pitcher, and that's what got him into the you know NFL as a quarterback. So if your son is a baseball pitcher, you know, a little league starts around uh, springtime. Uh, you know, you got Colt League. You got all these baseball games. High school baseball is around the corner as well. This guy can do some magic and help your son, your child out, and make him one of the best players on the team and maybe elevate him to a state championship you never know. So talk to Quincy Carter. And uh, on behalf of yours truly, Rock and Roll James and Quincy, man, thank you for joining us right here. Hashtag PVT, the NFL Valley Talk Daddy. What? Uncle James. <laughs> <laughs>